those look like balls. Okay, now it looks like tits. So don't believe the jackasses who say fruit are bad because they contain sugar. Of course they contain sugar. That's the whole point. Carrots will actually improve your skin tone. Pork and poultry are both monogastric. Humans don't synthesize vitamin C. Most animals actually do this. All right, boys, you know it's serious when I'm off my ass and I'm actually delivering a lecture on a whiteboard. So this one is about the esoteric food pyramid. We already know that the government issued food pyramid is trash. So it's time that we make our own one based on the principles outlined in this course. So let's start off with the first thing. The keystone of this diet is red meat, especially red meat from ruminants. So ruminants are animals which have a multi-system digestive tract like cows, sheep, and lamb, goats. All these guys have a multi-stage digestion process, which means that their fat quality is going to be better. So monogastric animals like chicken, turkey, pork, their protein quality is on par, right? They're the same in terms of protein quality, but they're not the same in terms of fat quality. That's why we start off with red meat. Red meat, especially from ruminants. So let me go ahead and draw a nice ribeye. I don't know if this is going to come out well, but we'll give it a go. That's supposed to be a ribeye, boys. So a nice ribeye is the ultimate piece of our puzzle here. And I will say that this is going to be costly. Red meats from ruminants are usually expensive. Lamb meat, for example, at least in the US, is really expensive. It's much cheaper elsewhere because there's more demand for it. But in the US, lamb meat is kind of expensive. And of course, a ribeye is really going to set you back. But you don't have to get a ribeye. So that's the thing. Red meat doesn't have to be expensive. It depends on the cut. So get good at making meals from the so-called less desirable cuts, which are equally nutritious. It's just that there's not as much demand for them. So what you do is look for stew meat. So stew meat, most people don't know how to use it. Most people don't buy it. So there's not that much demand. The prices are low, but it's massively nutritious. Or choose ground meats. Ground beef, ground venison can be really an amazing source of nutrition, especially because they often do contain organ meats. So become an expert on cooking and creating meals from the so-called less desirable or off cuts. You can save a lot of money, but get optimal nutrition at the same time. And not just optimal nutrition. This is elite tier nutrition. So that's the first entry into our list is red meats, could be ground beef, could be ground venison, could be lamb, could be goat, could be sheep, could be any of these. The next item on this list is, of course, eggs. High quality eggs. The quality is, of course, important. So red meat, we're going to get grass fed, grass finished. Eggs, we're going to get them from pasture raised. Let me go ahead and draw a nice basket. How do you draw a basket? I don't I feel like I haven't seen a basket in a while, but let me give it my best approximation. One dozen eggs. So how many eggs should you have? You should have at least two eggs per day, man. Two day, two eggs a day minimum. That's the requirement. You can go all the way up to 10 eggs if you so choose. You really want the eggs for the sulfur benefit. The sulfur is going to bind to and remove excess iron. Highest quality protein on here. And indeed does have high quality fats as well. Especially if you are not going to eat red meats, you should supplement with eggs instead. Then we move on to the next item, which is carrots. Carrots are really, really good for detox because they have these beta carotenes and also not just beta carotene, also other carotenoids which bind to and remove estrogens. They also remove metals. So carrots are an amazing part of your diet. But this segment also includes things like pumpkins and squashes, which also contain carotenoids. So let me go ahead and draw some carrots. Highly, highly, highly beneficial. And the thing is, you can have a lot of these. Carrots are pretty low in um, calories. So whether you're bulking or cutting doesn't matter. Carrots are very low in calories. So you can smash a whole bunch of them. And the coolest thing is, Carrots will actually improve your skin tone. So literally, you look better. Your skin will be more lustrous, more luxuriant in color by eating carrots. Because those beta carotens, they actually do become a part of your skin. Not so important for me, because I have pretty dark skin already. But if you're super pale, then carrots are an important part of your diet. Then we have poultry. I'm going to also lump pork into this, because pork and poultry are both monogastric. So let's go ahead and write poultry and poultry pork. I'm not a huge fan of pork myself. I don't like the taste and I tend to avoid it myself except for bacon. I do enjoy bacon. So poultry and pork, these are also good quality protein, really high quality protein, I should say, but simply not on par with red meat. That is to say red meat from ruminants when it comes to the fat quality. Let me go ahead, draw a chicken drumstick that is terribly drawn, but we're going to go with it. And finally, we'll finish this out with fruit. Food contains a lot of vitamins and especially vitamin C. 
Humans don't synthesize vitamin C. Most animals actually do this, but humans do not, which is why fruit is important for us. So don't believe the jackasses who say fruit are bad because they contain sugar. Of course they contain sugar. That's the whole point. Some amount of simple sugars is really beneficial for us. So yeah, go for fruit, man. Fruits are not a problem. When it comes to fruits, kiwis are solid. Those look like balls. That's a terrible drawing. Then we have pomegranate, another solid option. Pomegranate looks like a circle with a crown. Oranges, oranges are a nice option. I don't know how to draw an orange really. I think, okay, now it looks like tits. So let's add another one. Then we can also include coconut water in here. If you can get coconut water, that'll be really cool. Coconut water is the elite level electrolyte. I'm not sure if coconut water is a fruit as such, but I want to include it anyway. Of course, berries. When it comes to berries, blueberries are a solid option. Let's draw some blueberries. Oh, grapes. Grapes are a solid option as well. Bananas, especially if you're going to go work out, solid option. So really, any kind of fruit are good. And speaking of fruit and also carrots, you should absolutely wash them well before you consume them. Carrots, not so much because carrots are anyway under the ground, so they're kind of protected. But fruit, for sure. For sure, you need to wash fruits before you consume them. When I say wash, I'm saying 10% salt solution or 10% apple cider vinegar solution. Soak them in there for a little bit and give them a nice scrub before you consume them. And that's your basic tier, boys. So this in itself is going to set you apart. Like this diet, just this alone, is already better than 90% of people around you. But now we take it one step further. We introduce some living foods. So I'm going to go ahead and draw what I think a glass milk bottle would look like. Not the best, but hey, actually, that's all that. I'm pretty happy with it. Milk. And I'm talking about raw milk. All right, boys, so you know the drill. Raw milk, high in probiotics, has live cultures in it. The enzymes are not destroyed by homogenization, which means that the enzymes in this milk is actually going to help you digest it in the first place. So highly recommend some raw milk. If you can get raw milk, that's fine. At least try to get non-homogenized, ultra-low temperature pasteurized. Instead, that's also a solid option. Do not really go for the ultra-pasteurized stuff. There's really no point in getting those. If you can get raw milk or low temperature pasteurized, good. If you cannot, then just skip it. And we'll go to the next one, which is honey. I'm talking again of raw honey. And if you can get it, get unheated honey. So the difference between raw honey and just your regular store brand honey is that the enzymes are destroyed upon heating. So you don't want the heating. And let me go ahead and draw some honeycombs because the honeycomb is also pure magic. So you want to actually get the honeycomb if you can. Honeycomb contains its own suite of minerals and vitamins and enzymes. Highly recommend let me go ahead and draw a B because these guys are real G's for making this stuff. Yeah, that looks like honey. I think I can deal with that. So raw honey. Then finally, we finish out this layer with vegetables. That's right. Vegetables are not bad. I know that a lot of people are freaking out because of plant toxins. The hype is overblown. Unless your diet is literally a vegetarian-based diet where you're eating only vegetables, that case, yes, plant toxins will add up. When it's a part of your diet rather than your whole diet, plant toxins are not a problem. Garlic is a great option for its detox benefits. Is that how you draw a garlic? There we go, garlic. Ginger is a solid option because it has thermogenic properties. Potatoes are a great option for smashing on the calories if you're trying to bulk. That's my approximation of what potatoes look like. Then we have other root vegetables. So we can add these into stews, especially meat stews, makes it taste good. We can have beetroot. And I know a lot of people will freak out about beets because of the oxalates and stuff. Don't cry about the oxalate, boys. You're not having beets every single day. You're just having a small amount of beets as a part of a stew. So long as vegetables are on the core of your diet, you're fine. We can also have radishes. Radishes are solid for a bunch of reasons. One of them is that they contain aromatase inhibitors, which is a really cool benefit. People have been having vegetables for a very long time, so it's not going to hurt you all of a sudden. So veg. And this includes potatoes. Oh, what about grains? So grains are fine in very specific circumstances. If you're having whole grain-based sourdough bread, it's fine. So sourdough bread can also be added into this. Let's see if I can draw a loaf of bread without autisming. There we go. That's, that's bread. Sourdough bread. And there we have it. That's this triangle done. And finally, we'll capstone this entire pyramid with, of course, liver. I'm going to draw a nice big liver and put a crown on it because yes indeed liver 
is king. There you go, boys. Liver is the ultimate multivitamin in nature. Highly bioavailable, really top of the line. You can toss out all your supplements if you have liver. To consume liver, you don't really need to cook it yourself. You can use liver crisps instead. Equally good, but much more easy to eat. And finally, we'll close out with supplements. You don't need supplements. They don't really have a place on the pyramid. They have a place as an optional on top of the pyramids. So when it comes to supplements, what can you have? Whey makes sense if you're trying to bulk, but you're trying to get whey protein isolate and you're trying to get the unflavored stuff. Then there is a potential for cod liver oil, especially in the winter months. I don't use cod liver oil throughout the year, just the winter month. You can also use creatine and of course be cognizant that if you see any hair loss, then immediately stop using creatine. And then the last one, which is a possible good supplement is collagen. You can also use glycine instead. This is gonna help you fall asleep. This is gonna help with your skin, hair, and nails. It's one thing which is missing here, you might notice. I haven't really talked about butter. I haven't talked about fats in general. That's because it's not a part of the pyramid. It's just something you use for cooking. For example, if you're gonna make an omelet with eggs, you're gonna use butter to do it. If you're gonna make yourself a carrot salad, you're gonna sprinkle black seed oil or you're gonna sprinkle olive oil. So there's not a separate place for fats because that's incorporated in all the dishes that you prepare. So perhaps what I should do is I should make a little special circle in here and use this for fats. And I mean butter, I mean saturated fats by the way. Butter, I'm including here olive oil, I'm including black seed oil, I'm including ghee. So let me go ahead and draw a nice stick of butter. Looks like a cigarette. That's a terrible drawing of butter, but I don't think I can improve upon it. There you have it, boys. That is the esoteric food pyramid. This is elite level nutrition. If you can actually master this, this is better nutrition than the kings and rulers of olden times. This is the pyramid that's literally gonna cause your government officials and your registered dietitians to have a stroke if they see this thing. This really goes against all the average normie BS. This is my personal guide for designing my own meal plans. I hope this has helped you. At this time, go ahead and mark your module as complete.